That was a yes. bit fantastic. Wasn't it? Yes. And we've got in the studio with us now... <laughs> Mr Fantastic. Mr Fantastic, Michael Palin. Thank you for coming out to play with us today. Thank you. I, 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 it's an honour. It is, is it? an honour. An actual honour. to be here with you too. It really is. Oh. I, oh. I didn't know you did radio shows, but... Um, no, no, not many people do know. <laughs> well, they will now. Our mums know, and that's about do they, it. That's it, yeah. yes. We don't want, we don't want everyone no, in the world no, we to know. We're, we're keeping it secret exactly. like the hidden don't, people. Don't, it's special. Yeah, well, I can't believe no one's heard of the hidden people. No, nobody Michael, has. Michael, you have never heard of the hidden people. I think it might just be in I your haven't head. heard of the hidden people, but I suppose that's because they're hidden. They don't give out PR releases or anything <laughs> no, like that. No, they're quite famous in Iceland, but you have to go there, really, to Yeah, have you seen, did you them. see any, do you get you feel, don't see a feeling them. when you're they're there that they you might fool. be under your bed or sort of <laughs> <laughs> next door? They live their own little lives away in the rocks. Uh. And uh, it's only if you disturb them that so they, they can... So you put me off going to Iceland now, saying Why? that. Because I don't want a hidden person fiddling about with me under my dress <laughs> when you don't know when they're there. Is there you should know Iceland. Iceland. Oh, oh come on. What's <laughs> different from Oh, England? actually, I do want Yes, that. of course you do. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one That's of the biggest compliments I ever had oh. was when um, Jack Cheese, yes, Mr John Cleese, yeah, yeah. Mm. once said to me, uh, you know what, you are French. Mm. I said, what? He said, you're the female Palin. Oh, yeah. <gasps> he does. said that to me. I honestly swelled with pride. Can you see how swollen I am? <laughs> yeah. No, please look at me. No, am I, I swollen? I'm looking. I'm embarrassed. I'm... <laughs> John is, I mean, p- apart from calling people only by their surname, you know, yes. you can tell he's not really grown yes. up since he was 18. <laughs> um, he, he also used to sabotage me because in America, until the advent of Sarah Palin, everyone <laughs> pronounced my name Palin, so I would have to go and, and say, oh, oh, no, thanks, it's actually Palin. They say, oh, Palin, Palin, yeah, OK. And John, and there was one man crusade to tell everybody in America, of course, I was with, uh, I was with Michael Palin the other day. Oh, it's Palin, is it? Yeah, it's Michael Palin. <laughs> Mickey, Mickey Palin, we call him. So I'm known amongst certain so, Americans yes. as Mickey Palin. You're I've given up now. saying Palin. Finished. But anyway, I'm... I'm Again, that's an honour to yeah, be well, lovely. compared to you. Lovely. This is getting all very <laughs> Can I thank Sorry. you? Can I thank you <laughs> also oh, for Do Not Adjust Your Set? Oh. Can I thank you for that for a long time ago? For Denise Coffey, for bringing us her. Yeah. But well, thank you. We, did we send you the DVD? No, you didn't. Oh, I thank you for the show. Thank you for, for doing it, it oh, in, in the first place. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> no, it was, well, I know that's taking you back a bit. Thank Eric and Terry and, yes. of course, the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band. Yes. And David yes. Jason. Yes! Don't forget. I mean, the first time I'd ever heard of David mm. Jason. I just love that show. It's properly zany, and I don't often use that word. It was nice and silly, and the great thing about it was it went out at about quarter past five to quarter yes. to six. Yes. And it was meant to be for children. Yes. But a lot of it, especially the Bonzo Dog sort of hallucinatory lyrics, were really above the head. So we used to get people like waiters in restaurants telling us how much they enjoyed the show, Italian waiters. Oh, we see your show. It's so good. I'm just dressing. I'm just dressing to go out and nothing on the telly. Look on it. It's brilliant. <laughs> so it was young children and waiters from yeah. Marion Franco's. Brilliant. Mm. Um, now, you studied mm. history, but it seems like you live thing. geography. Mm. What happened there? Well, I mean, I've got fairly weak sort of uh, concentration. <laughs> I just go where the wind blows. But I did actually enjoy geography at school. But oddly enough, when it got to university level... People started saying, well, you can't really do geography at university. It's not a serious subject. Mm. History or English are serious. And so it was a definite sort of push away from geography. And I was quite That's good at wrong, it. And, it. And I had two excellent geography teachers. They're really brilliant. Um, but then sort of history took over. No, history, that's the thing. Or, or English, if you want to write. Yes. And, and so the thing I think about geography is that you need to know a bit of science as well. And I knew a little bit about science, but I wasn't terribly good. But I think if I carried on with geography, I'd be a, a better rounded human being. I'm a bit rounded yes. anyway, but, uh, <laughs> you know, w- with science and the arts, which geography can offer you. Yes. And, and instead, I, I, I read history and did that in the evening, did comedy and theatre during the day at university, so in the mm. end it worked out OK, I suppose. Could you have imagined then how your life would be now? I mean, you seem oh, to have no. a very charmed life. It seems as if you're doing yeah. the job that you utterly love. Do you utterly love it? Looks yeah, like I do. You do. I'm very happy doing it. It's very fulfilling, if that's not a sort of pretentious word. No, it's not. Um, the good thing about travelling is, I mean, I, I love travelling anyway, mm. and I think if you have to write a book to go with it and you have to have a you know, give an account of it in a, in a, in a film or a programme, then so much the better, because you learn a bit more and you concentrate a bit more. And although people go on about, oh, you've got a film crew there all the time, but because I've got the BBC yeah. sort of um, imprimatur, as it were, yes. it means you can get to places 
are very often that you wouldn't be able to get to normally. So you're yes. quite privileged and I'm quite lucky. I mean, some places they don't want you, but on the whole, if you're BBC, they, they take you And do you use seriously. the same crew each time? Have you got a gang that you've Try to, friends yeah. With? Yeah, I, I'm quite loyal in that way. I think if you've got a group of people you work with, stay with them as long as you possibly can. Yes. We're all getting a bit old now. <laughs> yes. And I can't remember, Nigel, I've been, Nigel Meekin's been with me since, oh gosh, since we did Around the World in 80 Days. And he's, he's almost my age now, he's about 65, still lugs this great camera around wow. and manages to bend himself into sort of the boot of cars and things like that and climb up trees and, and stand with one arm hanging off an express train in the Sudan. He still does all that. Fantastic. Yeah. Because I think we actually, we really realise this is something, it, it's a rare and privileged form of, of yeah, travel and absolutely. we all enjoy it. And what, what kicked it off? Was there, was there a programme that you did that started you thinking? Um, well, you, you know, I mean, I was doing Monty Python. We were sending up the whole idea of presenters, you know, kind of people with microphones talking really about <laughs> storage jars when behind there's a whole revolution going on. Yes. And <laughs> so to be suddenly taken seriously as a presenter, and I was asked to do this thing called Great Railway Journeys oh, yes. of the World. Oh, I remember right. that. You remember yeah. the series? Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I was on some, I was in the radio studio, and I was going on one evening about transport and railways being my favourite and all that. The next morning someone rang up and said, I'm Ken Stevenson, I'm producing this series. We'd love you to be a presenter of one of our programmes. What's it called? It's called uh, Great Railway Journeys of the World. I said, yes, Thanks, you're on. Ken Stevenson. Fantastic. But then, you know, then only when I'd sort of said yes, he admitted there was only one left and that was London to crew. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been thinking of the steppes or the Andes or, you know, up Mexico and all that. So I went to crew. But we, we went on to Leeds and other places. So it wasn't quite as sort of restricted as you might think. Anyway, I had to do presenterish things. And I found it really odd. It said, Michael, look mm. out of the window with interest. Oh. So you're looking, you know, out of a train window and trying to be very interested at what's going at the time. And also, I just remember a wonderful... It was also Pythonic. I had to interview this lady who had been on the line from Inverness to Kyle of Lockhalsh on the day it opened in 1898. And she was like 100 or something like that. And I had to interview her. So I so, you know, got her there and chatted a bit. And I said, so what was it like when that line opened? It must have been very exciting. And she just carried on looking out of the window. So I realised we had a bit more audibility problem here. So I said, well, so what was it like? She kind of looked at me. Hello. Yeah. What was it like then? You know, this, this first journey, it must be extraordinary. with the big steam engines and all that sort of thing. And she, looked, and she said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you for the noise of the train. <laughs> and I thought, this is totally Python. Sorry. 
Salvation Society God save Donald Duck Vaudeville and variety We are the desperate Dan Appreciation Society God save Strawberry Jam And all the different varieties We are the Village Green Preservation Society God save Donald Duck Vaudeville and variety God save the Village And that was Kate Rusby with the Village Green Preservation Society, originally by the Kinks, but we got her to sing it for Jam in Jerusalem. Yeah. The much-missed Jam in Jerusalem. <laughs> yes, try not to be too bitter, Jennifer. <laughs> Come on, BBC, bring it back. <laughs> so, Michael, do you still have a sense of wonder when you do your travels? Are you still doing yeah, travels? Yeah, we're doing a series in, in Brazil, oh. um, which is wonderful. Um, of course I do. I mean, that's what keeps me going. I really always travel to learn and, and to, to learn something myself because I'm not, I'm not very good at sort of pretending to be, you know, a, a political analyst or a sociologist or an anthropologist. <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, David Attenborough is brilliant because he absolutely knows what he's talking about. No one <laughs> could refute what he says mm, yes. about mating habits of the alligator or something yes. like that. But I, I would waffle a bit and have to ask somebody. So it's best just to <laughs> say, hey, this is all fantastic. Tell me about it. Yeah. So uh, that's what I enjoy. And I, I very much also enjoy the fact you can sort of connect with people. I used to be terribly worried, why am I doing this job and I can't speak any languages? And you realise it, it's not the only thing that matters and certainly shouldn't put people off travelling. No. If you travel in the right spirit and you're sort of open with people, you, it's amazing what sort of well, communication you it didn't matter to the old get. explorers and the people and the travellers, did it? I mean, people used to, in Victorian times and before, used to travel the world without yes. necessarily knowing the language. I know, and what really is amazing, and I, they must have known the language, are those women who used to dress up as young Arab boys and go travelling for, for yeah. two years Hester in the empty Stanhope. quarter. Hester Stanhope, and, yeah. Well, even Freya Stark, I mean, yeah. we dressed up really and just went off on her own mm. as a woman. I, mean, I presume she knew a bit of a she language. She knew a bit of a language, but, but probably not Arab. I don't know if she knew Arab. Like or... No. No, so it was very probably daring. Probably pitched up as went along. <laughs> so who, who makes mm. you laugh, Michael? You. you oh, make yes, me laugh. that's correct. You too make <laughs> yeah. me laugh more Do hysterically, Just hysterically than anybody else apart from <laughs> yes. Johnny Cash or, or uh, some of those England rugby players. Yeah, is um, Johnny Cash an England rugby player? <laughs> Apart from Johnny Cash, pause, or England Rugby Pitch. I see. I met Johnny Cash once. Sorry, this is not Did, did you know that? I want to know about that. No, it was just one of those great moments. It's like hearing that Elvis used to watch Monty Python. I mean, <gasps> did how he? could you believe that and, and carry on? But anyway, he did apparently. But I was in a, uh, doing a show in America and I was in the green room of this show and in comes this man, this tall man, all in black, you know, about seven foot tall. And he comes in and says to him, he comes across to me and said, Hi. John Cash, big fan. Oh. <gasps> That's how, how many five words yeah. that I would like on my grave. <laughs> John, Cash, John Cash, big how fan. Amazing. Big, big fan. So I yeah. mean, you're completely tongue-tied. I, 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 yes. Get, um, yes, and let me prove why you shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just. Can I ask you why you chose Brazil? Mm. Or did you not choose it? Was it just? Uh, um, no, I did choose. You've done South America before. Yes, the uh, the western side. But we'd done a series called uh, New Europe, which was going through Eastern Europe, and I thought that would probably be the last one we'd do. And it was just very complicated. We suddenly realised that short distance, but 20 different countries, all with their own sort of problems, yeah. all with a very, very long history and culture, it was just impossible to do it properly. Mm. So about four years on, I thought, let's do one country. And a country I haven't been to and I've always wanted to go to was Brazil. And then I thought, oh, if we do it for sort of September 2012, just after the London Olympics, people will be asking, where's the next Olympics? And indeed the World Cup, they're in Brazil. Mm. How do we know about Brazil? Oh, that's that Michael Palin. Perfect. Written a programme about it. <laughs> Mickey Palin. Mickey nice. Palin's a bit yeah. of marketing. On a programme. So that was my, you know. And did you learn anything you didn't expect to when you were there? Well, we're still filming, actually. Oh, oh, we're going okay. off to the Amazon in January, which I think I will learn a bit about. So you do it in oh, chunks, then, the film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, doing, we're doing four separate uh, film shoots. 
I think I realised that it, it's quite possible for a nation to be happy. I mean, it's quite odd. Mm. You, you don't hear... Yes, we don't do that such, here, do we? Well, you do. I mean, you're great. You, you sort of, <laughs> you, you know, spread the joy around. But, I mean, you listen to the news most of the time. It's absolutely grim. Where yeah. the worst mm. people in Europe at this, where they've got the worst, the lowest living standards, we beat our children more, you know, we set fire to more houses than anybody else, yes. apart from the Hungarians. You know, <laughs> come on, give us a break. But you go to Brazil and they are generally very happy people. They're lovely to work with. They're completely unselfconscious. So you can mm. talk to them virtually about anything. And there's no kind of side to them, really. They're just really, if you like our country, yes, come on. Can we help you? Show you this, show you that. Oh, brilliant. And, and they're very physically attractive. Are they? Mm. What do you mean? In what way, Michael? Are you talking about they girls in bikinis? Good. What? Are you talking about girls in no, bikinis? No, in tangas, oh. I think they are. Oh, tangas, you know, sorry. Tangas? <laughs> are they tiny mini They're bikinis? They're little mini, mini bikinis, which sort of just... Mm. Well, I won't, I won't go on. Did you spend a lot of time on the beach, then? Of course you do. Everybody does. You can't avoid the beach. The whole country is sloped down towards the beach, so you might stay inland. And for my own personal pleasure, Michael, yes. what were you wearing on the beach, I'd like to know? Well, <laughs> when I was filmed, a I to say, I was wearing, no, a rather... Long pair of uh, of khaki shorts oh, and, comedy uh, and a shorts. white t-shirt. Comedy shorts. You're absolutely <laughs> right. As worn in fish lapping dance. Yes. There I was because I couldn't get a tanga to fit me. <laughs> well, that's a bomb. It wouldn't shell. fit over my nose, let alone the rest. Well, thank you for coming in to play with us. Oh, very nice to see it's you. It's been lovely. To thank you for being so yeah. entertaining been well, lovely. and uh, so devilishly thank handsome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and we've got Elvis Presley <laughs> especially oh. coming up for you. Oh, so why don't you get lost? Big fan. <laughs>